Somewhere Better by I, under slash am, under slash Ellie, on AO3. Episode 61, Chapter 13, Dread. Can I start the machine this time? Izuku asked excitedly. I have to clean our hero uniforms separately, Shota said, changing lanes. I'll show you how, and you could clean the regular laundry, yes? Cool. They arrived at the laundromat a total 20 minutes later, Izuku humming a song in the back seat because Shota didn't like driving with the radio on. Izuku got himself out, a skill he had only perfected recently, and Shota got the trash bag from the passenger side seat, Izuku holding on to his sleeve as he walked into the laundromat. You're going to have to do this all by yourself someday, so pay attention, Shota said. He put his and Asashi's uniform in their own washing machine. He held up a tie pod. I know these look like candy, but for the sake of your health and my own sanity, please do not eat them. Izuku nodded seriously. All right. He put the tie pod in the machine, closed it, then pointed at the knobs and buttons as he turned them. This one is to decide how big the load is. This one is to decide how hot or cold the water is. And this one is for how you want it to clean. Izuku nodded, taking this learning experience as serious as he would any self-defense training session. Should have pushed one of the knobs in, and the washer turned on. Your turn. Izuku grabbed the bag of colorful clothes, and should have helped him pour them in separate washing machines. They bought another tie pod, and Shota held Izuku up so he could turn the knobs by himself. The child only hesitated a moment before turning on the machine, and Shota set him down on the ground, nodding approvedly. Good job, Cabbage, he said, grabbing the bag of white clothes and pouring them in their own washing machine. Most of his money probably went to this laundromat. A while later, after their clothes had been washed, Shota showed the child how to dry them, and then they shoved everything back into the trash bags. He promised to show him how to fold them once they got home. They drove home with Izuku talking about his day in the back seat, how Dinky had made a really pretty drawing for show and tell, and Mei had brought one of her tiny potato weapons, how Izuku had helped Itoshi with his presentation, who had brought one of his dad's skyroscopes, and Ochako had brought one of her older blueprints from her father's construction company. Izuku, of course, had showed off his hero notebook. When they got home, Hitsashi was already there, putting cups and plates on the table and listening to a pop song on the radio. He looked up once he heard the door closing, grinning. Hey, kid. He crouched, and Izuku dropped one of the bags of laundry in order to run forward and hug Hisashi's leg. Hisashi laughed, one hand petting the boy's hair, and one trying to keep the plate of food from falling. And you did the laundry, thanks. Hisashi continued. He put the plate down on the table and gently pried the boy from his leg. We're home now. I gotta show you something from school, Izuku said excitedly, running off to find his backpack by the door. Hisashi raised an eyebrow at Shota. I don't know either, he said, and Hisashi snorted. He came running back towards them a moment later, holding a powdered blue paper and grinning. Field trip! He shouted happily. Hisashi took the paper from him and glanced it over. I see, he stated. A trip to the dock, huh? To see the water heroes? Izuku nodded aggressively, and for a moment, Shota was worried the child was going to give himself whiplash. It's gonna be so cool, he exclaimed. Our school never gets to go on trips like this, and this is my first field trip ever. It's gonna be awesome. Two weeks from now, that's all she said, turning the people over. I don't know, kid. Izuku's excited grin fell. But what? We won't be able to chaperone this, Hisashi exclaimed. It's on one of our work days, and you're the kid of two heroes. I don't know how safe it will be. But, but I'm going to go to the docks to meet heroes. It'll be super safe, Hisashi sighed. Look, Hisashi said, I'm not giving you a yes or no, okay? But we'll think about it. You got to understand, kid. Now that your Anki Sho and I are getting our names out there, there's a lot of stuff that might not be safe for you anymore. I'm sorry. But, but you'll think about it, right? Izuku asked, hopefully. 
Yes, we'll think about it. It's all she said. He handed the paper back to Izuku. Go put this in the bill box, okay? Izuku nodded glimly, walking away at a much more relaxed place to do that. It could be okay, Shota said, sitting down. He saw she sat across from him. There would be heroes there, like you said. More than likely heroes we know. I know, is all she said. That's why I said we'll think about it instead of just no. Shota nodded, taking a sip from his drink. Grape juice. How much did the trip cost? He asked. If it was a lot, he could start setting aside the money now, and they could probably afford the trip by the time two weeks passed. Probably. 10,000 yen, is all she said. Guess it costs a lot to go see and meet heroes. Who thought? Shota shook his head, and Izuku walked back into the dinner area, climbing onto a stool and taking a bite of dinner. The excited expression he had in the car ride home was replaced by the same glum look he had for two weeks now. He knew it was childish, but he couldn't help but be upset with a six-year-old he'd never even properly met. So, Izuku. It's all she said, conversationally, and Izuku looked up from his food. You know how your uncle Sho and I are getting married in November? Izuku nodded. Well, we're deciding on groomsmen for the wedding, you know, and one of them happens to be our friend, Ingenium. Izuku's eyes widened. It's all she shrugged nonchalantly, taking another bite of food, but Shoto could see the beginning of a smile forming on his lip. We were wondering if you might want to meet him and his brother Tenya. You know, since you're both part of the wedding and all. Izuku gasped. Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. No, no, I want to, Izuku said, ignoring his food. I really want to meet him. Please, Anki Sashi, please. I guess, Isashi drawled, grinning. You have to be on your best behavior, though. I've been told that Tenya is a bit of a snickler for the rules. Got it? Izuku nodded, eyes bright again. Eat your food, child, Shota said. He hadn't properly seen Tensei in almost a year. Of course, he had seen him running around doing hero work, but he and Asashi hadn't properly interacted with him since their undercover mission. Izuku nodded, eating his dinner with a lot more vigor. There is another thing, Asashi said clasping his hands together and resting his chin upon them. I may have recently acquired a letter from a certain Katsuki Bakugo. You wouldn't happen to know who that is, would you? Izuku nodded, bouncing in a seat. That's Kachan! Mm-hmm, I thought it might be. That's all she said. I'll show you where the letter is. But first you have to eat and do your homework and chores. Got it? Izuku nodded again. And? That's all she added. Next time you go to visit the therapist, you have to at least say hi to her, okay? Or tell her about your day. I know you don't like her, but she's trying to help. And it's only temporary until we find something that's better for you. Yeah? Izuku nodded, a bit slower now. He quickly finished the food, running off to finish his other task. And still, the unpleasant feeling in Shota's chest lingered. All Izuku had to do was feed the cats, and a page of math homework. Two plus three, seven minus five, shapes. And soon, he was tugging on Anki Sashi's hand, so he would finally find the letter for him. They sat on the floor of the living room, Anki Sho in the kitchen, putting dirty dishes in the sink. He quickly tore the envelope open, opening the letter between him and Anki Sashi. His Anki sometimes helped him sound out the bigger words, or told him the meaning of words he didn't understand. Deku. The leather read. I wasn't being rude, but I'll be nicer. My dad found one of your letters. I don't think he cared much, but my mom might, and she's a hag. But she might find the letters too, and then I won't be able to send any more letters. So I have to be careful. The science teacher disintegrated a frog in class today. She has this quirk where these really sharp blades shoot out of her fingernails. It's not as cool as my quirk, but she would have made a pretty cool hero if she hadn't become a teacher. I'm still trying to learn how to shoot explosions out of my fingers instead of my palms. I think it might be easier like that. Right now, I'm just trying with small explosions. It might get harder when I do bigger ones, but I'm sure I'll be great at it. 
I'm gonna wait for the postman and see if he could get this letter to you in three days, instead of four. He said he would. Katsuki, August 30th. Dear Kachan, I'm happy you're writing again. Please be careful. If you stop writing, that would be no fun. We haven't dissected a frog in class yet, but maybe it's different at your school. I'll send you more notes on how I think you can make shooting from your fingers easy, if you want. Izuku. P.S. I think the mailman lied to you. September 4th. I'm going insane. This is another new chapter. Okay, I think I've actually gotten to the area where new chapters. Uh... Okay, so, uh, I will probably seem to overwork myself to some degree. The series is not dead. It's just updating at a slower place, so don't be concerned. Well, it, it, it's really slow. Uh, but you know what? We let people cook because sometimes we just gotta let people cook. Some people be cooking and some people be cooking mighty fine, okay? But, uh, I think I've gotten into territory where uh, I, I don't know. Um, What? Uh, that is, that is weird. That is weird. I could have sworn there was a plot line about, about, let's just say it involves social workers. I'm sorry. I, am I going insane? Did I not read that? We're up to 14. I know for a fucking fact I wasn't here at 14. Right? And I also don't remember much of, okay. Um, all right. Um, what's going on here? Why, mm, why, why, mm, hmm, hmm, some weird shit is going on here. Is this a Mandela effect? No, it can't be a Mandela effect. Did I, did I, did I, did I gaslit myself into thinking that that happened? What the fuck? I remember it clearly. Okay, uh, apparently I don't. Apparently I'm done. Uh, apparently my memory is not reliable. I'm not a reliable narrator. Yep, I, I know I said that I love non-reliable narrators, right? And it's super fun to see how an author really, you know, pulls that together and can really do that because sometimes people don't know how to do it and half of the time it comes out shitty, but when it's done right, it is just so fucking mwah, juicy. Um, I didn't want to become the unreliable narrator, thank you very much. I like for my memories to stay intact, thank you. Now on to the actual notes about this fanfic and this uh, chapter in general. I think this chapter was pretty cool. I do like the thought of Izuku and uh, Bakugo conversing through letters. I wonder if as they get older they get their phone numbers and then it, it gets a whole lot quicker but I wonder if this goes on and if so I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for them being besties. I'm here for them for them being friends. I love BKDK uh, good you know friends and stuff like that. It's 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 something that I love, mainly because I know how amazing it is to have a childhood best friend. I have a childhood best friend, and I love her with all my heart. I would kill for her. But, as always, my rain drops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to Metascord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.